Hey everyone, welcome to the Pandora Theater. I'm Clint Chaffer. And I'm Chad Weeks, and we're a couple guys who like movies and like to talk about movies. Clint, what movie are we going to watch this week? So we're actually going to be going through all of our favorite football movies. So I have my list, Chad has his list, but overall we're going to be uh, talking about Brian Robbins' Varsity Blues. Absolutely, love Varsity Blues, fantastic movie. So hey, before we get started, I do want to say, if you like this video, please like the video, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notified every time that we put out new content. Also, we're available wherever you can listen to podcasts. So with that, grab your popcorn. Uh, and what do you say we switch out the uh, scotch for some coffee today, since it is Super Bowl Sunday, and uh, we got a long day ahead of us. That is, uh, that's pretty good. We'll, uh, we'll be drinking coffee uh, so this episode. fill up your coffee. <laughs> and enjoy the show. Hey everybody, we just got done watching Brian Robbins' Varsity Blues. Chad, I feel like this is just one of the, the best feel-good football movies that you can watch. Yeah, so uh, there's a lot to take in about the movie. Uh, first off, I think that I think that it resonates a little bit more with us because of the time frame that it came in. So, what, what year was it? 1999. So we would have been, what, sophomores in high school? or No, juniors in high school. No, sophomores in high school. The math's hard. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but it would have been the, yeah. 99, so we would have been sophomores in high school. So it would have been coming out right when we were at the same time, same age as the the students in the in the movie. Um, and there's just so much to take in there. You've got a really young young cast uh, that boasts James Vanderbeek when he was like at the peak of his career. So was this after Dawson's Creek? Then this, I think this is right after Dawson's okay. Creek, or maybe in the middle or of during it. or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yep. So so and then you got uh, uh, Paul Walker. Who oh, rest probably, in pro, pro, rest yeah, in peace. R.I.P. Well, he probably had his first, his first Fast and Furious movie, maybe the second even. Um, yeah, that, yeah, I would, that'd be I would, interesting. Yeah. I, I think that I would say that the, the first Fast and Furious probably came out in like '96. You think? Yeah, it it would have been. I think it would have been before before '99. Maybe, maybe I, oh, oh, actually, it's right here. Oh, it's right yeah, here. Beautiful. There it is. Beautiful. That that's the year. If you're watching this on close. YouTube, my close. <laughs> uh, but uh, um, okay, so you also have John Voight, some uh, Ali Larder. Ali Larder, this would have been a launch. Was this point for after after Final Destinations, or is this do you think before? This is this is before Final Destination, I believe. Because right. Final Destination, I would have said probably two thousand. Amy we, Smart as Amy well. Amy Smart. In here? Amy Smart. And you know what? I wish we saw more of Amy Smart because she had a, a great run of good movies there. She was in Road Trip, uh, which Butterfly had, Effect. Butterfly Effect. Uh, this movie, and then uh, I I don't remember anything else from her after that. Like. Yeah, she's been in a few, but uh, yeah, I'm struggling trying to remember yeah, here. Yeah, so. absolutely. What about uh, Billy Bob Thornton? I think, or not Billy Bob Thornton. Billy, that's that's an actor. Uh, Billy Bob in the movie. <laughs> yeah, you're thinking of Friday Night Lights. <laughs> Friday Bob Night Lights. Well, we'll get to that yeah, here yeah, in a little yeah, yeah. bit. So, but Billy Bob, what, uh, Ron Lester, right? Yeah. So Ron Lester, uh, I wouldn't have known his name if we hadn't looked him up before this. But uh, uh, tragically, uh, first off. Billy Bob, who played a great role, uh, an iconic role. role. Yeah. I think that there's still still kids out there who are dressing as Billy Bob for Halloween and whatnot <laughs> with their, you know. Um, but anyway, uh, he lost a ton of weight. 310 pounds yeah. with a gastric bypass surgery. Yep. But. And then died years shortly. I mean, he yeah. died at the age of 45. 45 so, so I don't know yeah. how long after that. but So, yeah, so we've lost a couple guys out of here at a young oh, age. Yeah, I mean, with... Got, Paul well, Walker and and Ron Lester. So, yeah. uh, but uh, no, I also think you know it's it's interesting. However, uh, John Voight can do it, but he uh, he plays such a good bad guy in oh, yeah. every every role that he that he plays. I think one of my favorite roles from him is it uh, it's with Will Smith. Uh, is it uh, Enemy of the State? I think that's John Voight, right? And uh, and he plays uh, like the bad guy in there. And anyway, it's he, just I remember I remember. Uh, Will Smith and Gene Hackman. Yeah, Gene that, Hackman was the guy that. That's what I'm talking about. That's enemy yeah, that, of the state. Enemy of the state. I think I, so. I just don't remember John Voight being the back. I mean, he, might, he very well could have been. It's been, man, it's probably been 15 years since I watched the movie. So I, I was, I was loved that movie for whatever yeah. reason. Oh, but yeah. I just think John Voight just plays such a good bad guy. Yeah. And and I, I it's I don't know if it's his scowl or whatever, but he plays a perfect coach too. He does. He does. Uh, what was it? Mission Mission Impossible? Uh, the first Mission Impossible. He played. Uh, he played the. Uh, double agent in there basically because yeah. he was yeah set up That's set up right. the whole team and then uh, 
ran him in the ground. So I also think, too, like if you look at just the storyline of, of uh, Varsity Blues, I mean, you got – it's got the fun football story. You got a couple fun side stories that are going on. You got the love story. You know, like it, it's a lot of – it kind of encompasses a lot of things, although I do have to say it only got rated a 6.5 on IMDb, so it, it didn't get the highest rating. So. Yeah, so so that makes me wonder, like, because I can't imagine what you could take away and be how who could watch this movie and be like, man, that movie wasn't wasn't great. I mean, I would <laughs> like I, I don't know I don't know how you could do it, but so but maybe but maybe it's because we are so uh, that it's in that time frame in the in the moment for it. So maybe that's why. But man, it was good. It, uh, yeah, and I, I would also say one of the things. It, it resonated with me. I like I again. I love this movie, but I wasn't a football player either, right? So there was. Uh, I do think it may be a generational thing, yeah. but uh, I think it would even be more so if you are into you know if you were a football player or had some of those experiences. But yeah, totally agree. Uh, but, but again, like I said, I think that everybody everybody took something away from it. So I I, I would agree. And like I said, maybe that's part of the generational thing that that it, we're just part of that time frame. Um, I would also state the one thing that uh, that everybody took away from this movie is they now have a friend with the nickname Tweeter. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> like that. Everybody, was, that was huge. Such a popular. And and by the way, is that guy is he related to James Con? Because I noticed I, I can't remember what his first name is, but uh, his last name's Con. Oh, uh, so I don't or Con or Kane or whatever. So I'm wondering if he's actually related to to James Con, uh, who's huh. in Varsity Blues, the coach there. A um, little bit. Uh, talking about music as well, we could have added this one to the uh, music that made the movies or whatever. Because when you hear the Foo Fighters, "There Goes My Hero," you cannot not think about this movie. <laughs> am I right? Like, uh, I don't know. I can't think of any other other examples, but I know that the, the the soundtrack on this one was a pretty big deal at that yeah. time too. I I can picture James Vanderbilt ripping off his helmet after that big loss. Uh, after after the night out. Yes. Yeah. 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 The, uh, the, the other thing, too, I guess that I'd like to get your opinion on here. So James Vanderbeek at the, at the end of the game or at the end of the uh, movie, you know, the, at halftime, yep. coach has been kicked out. He goes in there and, you know, he, he gives, the, gives the spiel. Yep. Where do you rank his speech in all of these football movies? I mean, oh, it was a, it, just the just football movies, just football movies. Man, now like, I got to go back and think of, of, of football movie speeches. Uh, it, I mean, be. it was pretty good. It was, you know, it was, uh, it was, it was basically, what was it? Uh, I'll play the next 30 minutes for the next 30, 30 minutes. minutes. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. I mean, that's a great, great way. Uh, who else would have a better, better speech out there? Well, uh, let, it, let us know what you think. So, uh, leave something in the comments here and tell us what movie football movie specifically has the best speech given by either a player or a coach. I think that's a good transition into uh, any given Sunday. Oh, there you go. So this is number one on your list, right? I, yeah, this would be probably my number one. I, I don't want to say number one football movie because I know that there's I'm, there's going to be others on my list that are probably better. But, man, I love Any Given Sunday, and I think that it is such a clever movie, a great cast, uh, great music, the the LL Cool J soundtrack on there. That's cool. Uh, you've got great characters. Even even Jamie Foxx's song, uh, they call me uh, uh, Willie Beeman, or St- Steeman, Willie Beeman. How's that go? Was that right when he was just getting trying to get into music? Probably because I think he's he's released a couple albums yeah, or a couple songs or anyway, that, so. that album with, or that song with Twista too that was yeah. a big deal. Um, but yeah, uh, that that speech by uh, by Al Pacino uh, it, it, at the end of that movie it would probably be up there as well. So I would say uh, again, you know, like you always look at like the the actors in these movies. Uh, Al Pacino, you just can't hardly go wrong with, right? I mean, like I can't hardly think of a of a movie with Al Pacino where it's like. That's absolutely horrible. Because like, if it's a bad movie, he probably carried it to where it was at least a decent movie. Yeah, you know? I like, agree with that. Just I was I was fantastic. just watching uh, uh, any or not any given Sunday, uh, Dog Day Afternoon, and he's great in that movie. That's a very yeah. that's an older movie that I I'd never watched before, and I, I'm glad I finally got that one off my list. Great movie, by the way. Nice. So if I had to go onto my list, uh, my my top one that I enjoy the most. Now remember. I'm not sitting here saying it's the best movie by any means, but it's probably the one that I have the most fun with. Yeah. And that is Keanu Reeves in Replacements. That's, 
that's a really fun movie. Just it, overall a fun movie. It has everything that I want in a movie, and it's one of those on a you know random day I can turn that thing on, and I've probably watched it you know through its entirety ten times. Kind of like a Pulp Fiction movie where it doesn't matter what part of the movie you, you oh, pick yeah. up on, start right there and watch it the rest of the way through. You don't need yeah. to watch it. You don't need to rewind it. Watch the beginning, but you just start over right there. And, pick it up yeah and it's just it has so many fun characters too you know i i think the uh the kicker is absolutely hilarious yeah. uh you know they're smoking a cigarette on the field getting yeah. ready to kick his field goal you know and then you also have uh uh the the scene in uh when they get thrown in jail with uh, I will survive, I will survive yeah. and they're dancing, and I don't know what it is about that. Kind of a you know just a fun little scene, but <laughs> they it's even, they even have the end of it where the where like the coach comes down and tries to stop them. They're like, okay, we need to stop doing this. <laughs> but there's the deaf kid that doesn't they <laughs> yeah. can't hear the cues. And he's still dancing away. I love yeah, it. Yeah, but I loved it it's too. That, That's the sort of thing that makes that movie. Good. Yeah, and 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 the guy that played the deaf guy was absolutely fantastic oh, as well. Like great. I loved how you know how he ran his routes. I loved like the the dancing yeah. you know scene like where he jumps into it. But just an overall feel good movie for one of me. my favorite parts of that movie is uh he tells him early on uh gene hackman again gene hackman says uh winners always want the ball because early on yeah. in the movie he didn't want to throw and then at the end of the game he's like they have to score a touchdown here which you know most almost all these movies are going to come down exactly that moment but he's got to score a touchdown right here and there and he's like all right besides the ball who wants or besides me who wants the ball and then he looks at uh, the, the 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 deaf kid goes like, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah that's cool that's, i want that yeah, yeah. The other thing, too, just uh, real quick on this as well. I also love the team camaraderie in the replacements uh, because you have a, a whole bunch of these random guys that are coming together and they don't have a lot of, you know, they don't know each other that well or whatever, but you have his two, uh, his two linemen that yeah. uh, when they're flipping the cars over and everything yeah. else, that just immediately come to his defense. And I think that's just so cool yeah. where it's like, no, no, we're in this together. Yeah. Like, they, it's just a really cool – Yeah, uh, they actually shot uh, the the backup quarter – or the <laughs> yeah, starting they, quarterback's yeah, car. Yeah, they shot his car. Of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, another – that one could have been in the in the uh, greatest speeches too, if you actually think about it, because when uh, – What's the name? Falco. When Falco, Falco, Keanu Reeves comes up to the to the the huddle. The first thing he says is, uh, "I'm not good at speeches, but uh, what is it? Chicks dig scars, or pain <laughs> do, pain never doesn't last. Chicks dig scars, and glory glory, glory is forever. lasts forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah, something like that. But yeah. short, sweet, to the point. Yeah, and then but, he goes into it, and it's that's a great yeah. that's a great scene right there. Great movie, great call. But you talk about the camaraderie, which I think would bring into uh, uh, remember the Titans. You know, I have never seen Remember the Titans. See, I, I know, I know, and that's... My wife was actually, literally, just the other day, I told her this, and she's like, how... And I'm a huge Denzel Washington yeah. fan, and yeah. it's like, how have you not watched this? And I'm like, for whatever reason, it's just never... It's never been on at the time or whatever to where I've watched it. Now, I probably don't have a whole lot of excuses now that we've got streaming services. Yes, but, you so, know. so I challenge you to... Sure, it's on Disney+. Plus. So. Yeah, that's, I bet it is. So I challenge you to watch that one. Uh, do it today. Like, why not watch it today? It's a great... Yeah, that it's, would be a good one. Super, Super Bowl Sunday? Super Bowl yeah. Sunday. Watch one of... I mean, because it's probably... Out of all these movies we're going to talk about, overall, it's probably just the best movie. Uh, you know, you got, like you said, uh, uh, Denzel Washington, who's who's the, the coach there. Uh, but... Uh, the, be the best part of it is is the, is the coming together. The team, you know, they're, it's obviously a very racially motivated movie because you got the uh, the black kids and the the white kids coming together to to play football together, and it takes a while for them to to be a cohesive unit. And then when they do, it's a brotherhood, and it's so cool. And there's a there's that same dancing there's that same dancing scene that you're talking about in the replacements, but take it times ten. Oh no, because, kidding. yeah, because it's it's you know we are the Titans, the mighty mighty Titans, and they they got their whole dance thing going down. It's Man, that movie is so good and so great. Uh, I, I can't say enough good things about Remember the Titans because, like I said, it's probably the best movie out of all these we'll talk about just as pure, pure movie-wise. Pure movie-wise, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I and I apologize. I just, again, just haven't watched it. Yeah, so yeah. That's, one, that's one you need to uh, need to put on the list for today. Uh, one of them that, uh, that we did just watch, actually another, I believe it was another Disney film uh, on, uh, on Disney+, Plus, which is uh, the movie Safety uh, uh, that just came out. Yeah, so I know nothing about this one. I've seen it on Disney Plus, yeah. but I haven't heard any reviews or what anybody thought about it. Um, I know it's about a Clemson team, and I would assume a safety 
on the Constantine. Yeah, yeah, so, no. So it's the safety Ray. And what, uh, what time frame does this take place? Do you know? Is this like uh, an older movie? No, or? it's like 2013, maybe. I think. So this is when they're becoming a dominant. Yeah, like, like it was C, probably CJ. No, not CJ Spiller. That would have been way before that. Uh, it's it's in it's yeah. in like the it wasn't too far. Yeah, so they're know, in the championship era type of thing. They're, yeah, they're I think close to that. So I may be off by by a few yeah. years, but anyway, it's in the in the two uh, mid 2000s anyway. Yep. So, uh, but. Uh, the, uh, the the cool part about this is it's, you know, the, this guy, he's on the team and he basically has to end up taking care of his of his brother. And his brother's like, I don't know, 12 or 14 year old kid. Right. Uh, and so he ends up trying to move him into his dorm, sneaking him in to where he can live there. And this oh, is yeah. all a true story. Right. Yeah. I mean, the guys like yeah. actually did this. Well, then he ends up the in uh, Of course, the uh, uh, the in, NCAA. Uh, they end up, of course, having all their rules. People find out he has to end up moving out, getting a place on his own. Well, then even they start, uh, looking at the rules that are breaking because like the coach is giving him a ride to, to school. So uh, again, is this Dabo the, Sweeney that's doing it or is the, that, or is it, I mean, the head coach or. Yeah, uh, no. So the coaches are involved. Yeah. The, the coach's wife is involved by giving him rides. Uh, then the the NCAA are even saying that uh, you know, like the his uh, his priest came over and and helped out, like clean out this this house and everything. Well, all this is basically going back to the rules that the NCAA has that they can't be getting, you know, all of this yeah. assistance. Well, he ends up going in and basically uh, making a speech to the board of the N NCAA. And basically says, hey, I've already chose. So he's like, I'm going to quit football and take care of my brother wow. if you don't allow this this exception. Yeah. And basically, and he gives this phenomenal speech, right? And they basically ended up uh, allowing him to, uh, to to get some assistance on that and basically take care of his brother. That's, so. a, cool, that's a cool moment, just thinking about that, drawing a line in the sand and saying – this is this is what we're doing, whether you like it or not. If I can't do this, then I'm going somewhere else. Or yeah, it, like, and that cool. that moment when he draws, I, I can't tell you how he does it because, of course, that'll be a yeah. spoiler. But uh, just when he draws the line in the sand and says, "Like I've already chose," it's just a really cool feel good uh, feel good moment. And I'm not saying it's a, like, the greatest movie yeah. again, but it's a great story. So for that one, it sounds like the the football was kind of a secondary secondary yeah but you do get the team camaraderie right okay. because the team actually Rally comes around. in and helped hide the fact that he was really? taking care of his brother and was like shuffling him around babysitting like all this really fun stories that kind of went along with it so our, our family absolutely loved watching yeah. it so. i need to watch that just to see like where the who if you recognize any of those players like like i said if it is you know somebody that we would know that's currently yeah. played in the nfl or was at some point something like that so i that's cool yeah it was it was pretty neat so Great. Uh, Jerry Maguire. Ah, show me the money. Yeah, Jerry Maguire. So I want to talk about Jerry Maguire because I think that, that this is one that's – there's not a whole lot of uh, football actually played in the movie. There's a lot of highlights <laughs> about it. But, but man, it's cool. Like uh, Cuba Gooding Jr., is there a better role for – well, he won an Oscar for it, so apparently not. I think uh, uh, him and, – and I think he won an Oscar for that. Maybe not, but well, he almost had say. to. But yeah. as Rod Tidwell uh, – Again, another movie that is great with uh, music because I cannot listen to uh, uh, Tom Petty's Free Falling without thinking <laughs> of Tom Cruise singing at the top of his lungs in the car horribly, but it makes you feel so good, that, that whole scene, everything about that movie. I, I think the whole storyline with that, what I loved about it is it's a, it's a story about you know being humble, right? Yeah. Like getting humbled throughout that because you had this guy at the top of his game – basically crashes down you know throughout this whole thing and then yeah. basically has to kind of eat some humble pie right yep. throughout this whole thing uh I, I thought that that whole story was great um the acting in that was phenomenal on all great. parts yes i mean fantastic. Yeah, you could so. you could have gave out a lot of oscars there uh even uh even the best supporting actress for uh oh i'm not gonna be able to think of her name now um because she was great, she she did great. The the kid, the kid was oh, fantastic. the kid was hilarious. I think the yeah. the kid actually stole the show. He was he was such a big part of that movie that uh, it definitely would not have been the same without him. You know, yeah. the, the, I don't want to quote it, but the scene where they're talking about the zoo, <laughs> Ray, he's like the. The blank zoo's closed, Ray. <laughs> like, like that is that is a classic line. <laughs> like, gotta love it. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that that that's a good movie. I I enjoy that. Like I said, a lot of good a uh, lot of good scenes in that in yep, that whole thing. Yep. You know, talking about uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. I think my favorite role of his, off topic of of football, is uh, the where, where he's the uh, the scuba diver. Yeah, that's what I was trying to think of that movie. When why can't I think of the? It was a it was it was like a ma- something about man. Yeah, um, like it's not a few good men. That's no, that's, no, no, that's the Richard Gear. Um, uh, men of honor. Is Men of right? Honor sounds like that could be. That right. might be it. Let's put it up here. Yeah, it's right there. Right there. That's it. Yeah. But that is my favorite Cuba Gooding Jr. Movie. Great movie. Love Fantastic that movie. movie. Robert Actually, De Niro is is he in that I as think well? So. Right. I think so. But I again, I watched that probably when it first came out. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say 2003. Yeah. Just throwing it completely up there. But I would say 2003 roughly, and I I haven't I haven't watched it since. It's a pretty heavy movie, really. Oh yeah, no, it's it's a it's a it's a. I said I love that movie. Yeah. So I'm gonna go. Uh, my next one that I would go with is uh, another good like f- feel good hometown story, really. Uh, I'm noticing that I think this is another Disney movie. Disney likes to put out uh, football movies. They do, yeah. Uh, but Invincible. Um, and, and I think I have to put that on there for probably two reasons. I love the storyline, right? It's a true story again. Uh, and then also I, I'm kind of a fanboy of, uh, of Mark Wahlberg. So yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm, you got a, a bit of a, bit of a man crush on Mark Wahlberg. So I'm going to, I'm going to throw that out there. Um, th- this movie, I, I mean, it's a good story, but I just never resonated with it. I guess, uh, for me, it was just very, very okay. Uh, I, I don't think I liked the dark and dreary tone of it with the uh there's one reason why you don't like it what's that there's one single reason that has nothing to do with the movie it's because of the shirt you have on right now <laughs> because this is the, the new york jets <laughs> no this is the no this is the eagles, eagles yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was, gonna Same say, colors. I was getting ready to say there was actually the the, the no it's philadelphia eagles yeah, you're philadelphia right group. i'm sorry it was very philadelphia based there and that's what they did the tryouts it's a it's a cool story and i love that it happened but in the same sense if for the whole time it's like okay you know yeah I, yeah oh man i can't believe i just i just mess that up you know it's on my <laughs> list and i just said the jets and it's the eagles oh. uh the, the the gal in there she was a giants fan though so the, yeah, you're, right. you're getting closer to new york yeah there you go yeah. there you go uh my next one let's go with uh silver linings playbook another Ill- or philadelphia eagles based that is movie. philadelphia eagles yeah. yes so this one is again very loosely based on uh on football but i i love this movie uh when it came out uh, I, this is what made me fall in love with Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, like, I think she's fantastic. I think anything she, I, I really do. I Jennifer Lawrence, anything she's in, I am one hundred percent in. Uh, and she that was that was the season where she actually fell going up the uh, the stairs yeah, that's to right. accept yeah. her Oscar. And then that was that was the first time that like I remember saying, if Jennifer Lawrence doesn't win an Oscar for this role, then I'm never watching again because it was well, it was a hard line in the sand for you me. You also have to look at I mean, anything probably, you know, J Law's in and anything that, that Bradley Cooper is in. Correct. And then you mix the two together and I mean What chemistry? Like the, the, that that movie is so great. The chemistry there is fantastic. Look, Chris Tucker, wasn't he the Chris Tucker was the other guy in there that kind of kind of helped out with the dancing parts of stuff. Chris Tucker did great, uh, oh. just bringing in a whole different level to the to the movie. It's I, really a story about it, just like a couple broken people too, yes, right? Yeah, you know, I mean, like it, they just got to try, you know, muddling through life together and yes, making each other better. You know, yes, I mean? and they 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 they, they exceed so well. And I just I love that movie. I could watch that movie. I should watch that movie at least once a year because it is <laughs> it is great. Uh, Robert De Niro too. You can't you you, you can't got to mention Robert De Niro. Who, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's I feel again. like we're mentioning Robert De Niro a lot here too. We've we've got got a lot of Gene Hackman, Al Pacino, <laughs> and Robert De Niro. So let's well, see if we can keep that. Ch- can't that. go wrong with those guys. No, so. absolutely, absolutely. I I'm gonna go with uh, the next one, and uh, again another good feel good true. Sto- Apparently, I like true stories too. Yeah. So oh, yeah, good point. <laughs> that's that's what's on my list. But uh, the Blind Side. I I thought the 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 Michael Orr story. Uh, is just such a cool story, and uh, and of course you got Sandra Bullock, who is just yeah, you can't go wrong with her either. I mean, she's absolutely amazing. So. Yeah, that movie was great. Sandra Bullock was great. Uh, Tim McGraw was great. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and yeah, again, it's a great, great feel good story. It's a, it's that one again. Uh, football is mainly is a secondary um, aspect to it because you look at it's mainly about uh, mainly about family <laughs> and. It gets a little cringy at parts for me because, like, when she goes out there, she walks out of the field and says, "This quarterback, that's that's me, and you got to protect me." And it's like, yeah. I get it, I get it, but to me, it's like, 
come on, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, I do, I do see it. I, it's a fantastic movie, but, uh, interesting enough, if you look at, uh, you know, safety and blindside, the other thing that comes into play is, is the, a lot of the rules and restrictions around the NCAA. Like if you think yeah. about, uh, yes. like that was a, that was a key part of him going to, uh, what Mississippi and, yep. Yep. uh, and, and going that because that was, his, yeah, was. because of the, that Ole was, Miss. yeah, Ole Miss. Ole Miss. There yeah. It is. Yep. And, uh, but the, the one scene that I love is when he wrecks the truck and yeah. he puts his arm over yeah. and, you know, protects, protects his brother. Right. Yep. And yep. I just thought that was just, that's just, I just got chills again, just thinking about that, but uh, yeah. just a, a great this, scene. So yeah. give him like superhero powers of reactions. Yeah. And all that stuff. Yeah. It's just so cool. Yeah. You know? Very cool. Very cool. Uh, my next one that I'm going to go with is another one that I don't know what year this came out. I'd probably say. Say ninety five. Can we put that up there too? Yeah, right there. We, should, we should have put a lot more uh, yeah. dates. Uh, looked up dates before we did this, but the program, the program. So uh, yeah, I th- think that if anybody, because this one is, I think, a camaraderie thing. That if you look at the the you know my high school football teammates, I think everybody that that played football with me anyway loved the program, and I feel like that's where it le- because that was this is a pure football movie. Uh, there, I mean, there's they're exercising some demons on there. Uh, have you seen the program? You know, I I've probably seen bits and pieces of it. Okay, but I okay. feel like that is another one of those that if you were a football player, it resonated really well to you. And if you at that age, specifically for me, I just wasn't into sports, so it was like, eh, whatever, uh, you know. I, and so I I will agree. I'd with like that. to see it now. I would yeah I would but. I would agree with that um, because I. You know, it's funny because we were we were talking about uh, doing movies, f- sports movies, not long ago, and uh, my buddy Dino, uh, our buddy Dino, uh, reached out and said he's like, "So was the program good?" And I said, "I love it," and gave him a you know, a, but I never heard back on what his thoughts were on it. Um, oh, Dino, yeah. So Let I was like, know. I would like to know what you What'd thought you if you ever watched it uh, because I think it was great. Uh, again, this is a, a James Con movie. Um, the other thing about the program, now I may be mistaken about this, so we got I didn't do any fact checking before before this uh before this podcast here, but I believe the original cut of the of the program uh to get like jacked up before the games, there was a scene to where they laid in the middle of the interstate on the lines, right? Or laid in the middle of the road on the lines. And that was their rush. And they had to take that scene out. Oh. No, they had to remove it. Oh, okay. So like, it's not in the movie anymore. Okay. Because students started trying to do that, and there was, like, somebody that got ended up getting hit by a car and, like, fatally. Wow. So I didn't, I didn't know anything about that. Uh, but I, why does the notebook get to keep it, huh? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> why, why can Allie and uh, – what's his name? Oh. I've never seen the notebook, so – Never seen the notebook? No, I've never seen the notebook, so <laughs> ah, – I know it's a chick flick, but yeah, – it's about as much as I want to talk about the notebook right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, well, hey, the next one on my side is going to be – I'm going to go with uh, – again, it's not really a football movie, right? Yeah. Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Oh, that's a football movie. I mean, it's got Dan Marino in it. How can it, it not does, be a football it movie? It does. <laughs> it does. I just, I, I tell you what, y- you got to look at that. Uh, honorable mention that is not on our list that would also go along with this. Waterboy, right, is yeah. another one. Yeah, you can't, but, you, you can't have a football conversation without mentioning Waterboy. Yeah, so I look at both of those movies that, of course, they're comedies, just true blue co- comedies that are absolutely fantastic. I, I think I watched The Waterboy for the first time in a... Uh, in a uh, RV with my grandparents, like we were on our way to Florida or something in this RV, and we stopped at a uh, uh, a uh, oh man, I can't even think of the this Blockbuster video. Poor went out for Blockbuster too, but uh, it's, I shouldn't be that far removed from it to to forget that name. But uh, and just rented a random random movie from Blockbuster Video to watch Waterboy. Watch Waterboy. Nice. Yeah, so with my grandparents. Nice. Well, if you think of like uh, Ace Ventura on that side of it, is uh, I think this was like, I mean, that's got to be like Jim Carrey's like first like big thing that put him on the map, wasn't it? It's got to be because there was like he had that. He had that that first B rate movie that was like Rubber Face or something like that. And then he went on to then then The Mask and this was before The Mask. This had though. to be before The Mask, yeah, right? Yeah, I think it had to have been. So I I think this was like the movie that put him I would on the map. I would totally agree because he's really I mean he is really overacting type on that one. Like he's really oh, yeah. he's really they you know that I heard something uh, said that when he's in a movie they will have in the script 
they will say Jim Carrey does Jim Carrey things. And that's, <laughs> that's all it says. And then he's supposed to just ad lib everything in there. So like for Big Daddy, or not Big Daddy, sorry, that's uh, Adam Sandler for uh, – uh, what's the l- one where he's like, liar, liar. In Liar, Liar, it was just constantly <laughs> Jim Carrey does Jim Carrey things. And that's how you get all that absolutely outlandish behavior. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and that that too, I don't know, again, if that's like a generational thing because like you and I got to watch Jim Carrey become Jim Carrey, right? Yes. And so like there's like – you you have to have a certain appreciation, even for like Ace Ventura or any of yeah. those. Uh, you got to have an appreciation for him yeah. to understand. I think the comedy that you're getting. Right? Yeah. The question because- is, do you if you introduced Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, today, if it was released today and you'd never heard of Jim Carrey, how does that movie? How how is that movie received? My boy has watched it multiple times, and it's like he he absolute him and his cousin have been watching this, and they just nonstop laugh. Really? Yeah, they okay. love it. All right, perfect. So, so I don't know. That's, like it's so it's not gen- it, that's gonna pass it on. So I mean, he talks out of his butt, right? So I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's gonna be funny for any twelve year old. Touche. Touche does talk out of his butt. <laughs> Classic Jim Carrey. Um, one more that I want to mention uh, that I I feel like we would be remiss if I didn't is Friday Night Lights. Another one. Uh, I, I don't think that's the one with Tim McGraw, right? Yeah, Tim McGraw. Yeah, so I've watched this one time. Yep, yep. And Billy Bob Thornton is actually yeah. in this one. I actually want to go back and correct myself because I said Scott Scott Con was or uh, James Con, not Scott Con, uh, was in uh, the program. The pro- I think or said, no, yeah. I, he was in the program, but I said that he was in uh, Varsity Blues, and he's not. I was. Hmm. I don't know where I was getting that. I think it was because Scott Con is in there. Gotcha. Um, anyway, regardless. Um, so uh, Friday Night Lights. That is a that is a fantastic movie. Um, I don't know why I don't love it more. Uh, I, again, I'm going to talk about my buddy Dino and his quoting of uh, the the uh, Miles or uh, Booby Miles's uncle, where he's talking about he can run, he can pass, he can <laughs> walk the dog right. and paint your back porch. And paint your back porch. <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's I just love the way he quotes that. A great, great. Uh, Great impersonation. Um, also, but would this be so? If you think about, you know, you said that it's not, you know, maybe it doesn't resonate with you. Yep. Is this the next generation from ours yes. varsity blues? Yes. Yeah, so I think that's what it is. I think that it would be th- that generation because there's. I talked to a lot of uh, a lot of the Mercer County football players who like they will die on this hill for for Friday Night Lights. Like it was <laughs> it was a heated debate when we were talking about the what which movie is the better movie. This uh, was in what Tab Bomber had Tab, a, had yep, another Tab, another thing on yep, this, this right? This is the original. This is the okay. best sports movie ever thing. The uh and Friday Night Lights uh I, so, it was like So Tab, th- let us know which one are what, what are you putting as your number one football movie yeah. here? So uh it was I think it was Devin Morford and uh oh I I can't remember who all was arguing about it, but it was Devin was like I feel like that's the only thing we talk about anymore is Friday Night Lights. Uh, <laughs> you know the hardest part for this was also a TV show, right? Yeah. Right. Was it a TV show before the movie or a movie is before? It Derek the, Morford, I should say that. What's that? Who was was it? This a movie? Movie before? first. Movie, movie first. first okay. Then a then a, uh, then a TV show. Yeah. Uh, the thing that I hated about this movie, and like people may like you know hate me for this, but uh, I, I hated Tim McGraw in it, and it's not because his acting. It's because I didn't want to see Tim McGraw like that. Oh yeah, because like, he was it, a horrible human being. Yeah, he's like he's a horrible person, and it's like it was it literally was hard for me to watch because I I love Tim McGraw yeah. in real life. Yeah, and so to watch him be this like I don't know monster of a man, you know, it horrible was just, human being, and he was so good at it. Oh, I know. Like that's he was such a like he pulled off that role perfectly. That's why I think as I, being a bad I, guy. That's why I think I disliked him in this movie. Like yeah. I don't even want to watch it again because I hold him to a to a high regard. I I totally agree with that because he was he was the like epitome of a of that uh, football dad that you know like overpowering and but. But Severe much alcoholic yeah, as well. But, m- but much like, worse. I mean, like you just just a horrible, horrible human being. Yeah, I just I, I that that was probably the the hard one for me. So yeah. any anything else we needed we need to bring in here? Any other movies? I the longest so, yard. We we should probably talk about the longest yard oh, and Adam Sandler. And, actually, that that is a fantastic. I love I love that. You and I probably enjoy that for the simple fact that like half of the cast from WCW and correct. WWF are in yeah. there. And, right? and it's and and and, and Nelly. Again, Shout out to St. Louis, right? Yeah. Nelly's in there. I thought he played an awesome role. And we, we should be talking about the original. Uh, I know that the original should be the uh, the one we mentioned. But again, generationally, mm. this this yeah. was just bigger for us because uh, I didn't watch that one when I was a kid. You know, I've seen it since, and it's it's good. But 
uh, and actually, this I don't think that the, I like the Adam Sandler one. I think that the Adam Sandler one wasn't wa- uh, well regarded either. I think if you looked it up on IMDb, I think it's probably gonna have a pretty low rating. But I love that movie. I think it was very yeah. clever. I enjoyed everything. It, yeah. Again, it had like the the highs, the lows, the yeah. the comedy, like everything else. I had, how I how it. often do we do we quote the fact that Bruce is gonna step in for whatever quarterback goes oh, down yeah. or whatever? You know, like I, I feel like it's it's so relevant right now. Uh, you know, you should, you should come to the tree outs. Ah. The tree outs. <laughs> the tree outs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I, I tell you what, that 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 was a fun movie. Um, I think one of the other ones that I would throw out there that this isn't like, I, again, it's not like a my favorite movie by any means, but I think I like it for the simple fact that it just brought awareness, uh, which is a concussion. And yeah. and I would state that just because I thought I think for the the average person out there it finally brought to light the issues that that are out there with with CTE right and and not to get into that conversation by any means but i do think that that movie did like that was the good thing that that movie did yep and and you look into it uh the 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 football in general has changed so much just from like the, the past 20 years i mean there was never any of this stuff no. back when i was in high school well, it's or- even like the rules the equipment you know i mean what do they do with the the helmets are now like more like rubbery sounding. Yep, they yep. thought that was going to affect like how people watch the games because you don't hear the the crash. crash you yep, know. Yep. And then they also took like you look at the the high school players now. They they practice with like a, a rubber yeah, coating yeah, on top of yeah. it, which is which is a great part as well. Um, but but you look at look at the last twenty years, and you would go to uh, you go to Monday Night Football, and they would talk about. What is the name? What was the name of that segment where they just sh- showcased the biggest hits and people just getting annihilated Ugh. on the field? And like, I mean, they were the yeah. most violent uh, uh, hits you'd see of the week. And that was the, it was basically like what, what Come On Man is now, but instead it was just you big know, hits. lid lifters yeah. and 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 yeah. leading with your helmet first, yes, helmet, helmet just contacts. Yep. Yeah, yep. well, and that's where the the Sean part Taylor that uh, that that just absolutely shocked me in this. Um, cause it was hard to watch, right? Cause you see like the breakdown of the, what well, the guy, the Steelers guy, yep. that was like just a brutal storyline. Um, but they end up saying in there that on the, on the line, the linemen there, even though they're not in the, you know, like typically the big hits, right? Yeah. Every time that they hit their helmets yep. together, it was like he had, uh, experienced like, what was it? Like 30,000 car yeah. crashes. Yeah. Because you, you just, the constant, cause the you constant. figure, yeah, you figure, uh, uh, just in that, in that lineman battle, you know, you got people just smacking your head all the time yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah, absolutely. So, so that, that, that's the, like I said, I do want to at least just bring that, uh, yeah. bring that movie up just because of, you know, like yeah. I said, just some of the wor- awareness. There's a few other movies out there too. Um, I have to throw my nod out to, uh, and this is a generational thing, The Little Giants. <laughs> I you know I loved it. Okay, so Isn't I need that go- Rick Moranis, right? Wasn't he the coach? Yeah, Rick Moranis uh, and Ed O'Neill, Ed, right? Ed O'Neill yeah, was the yeah. was, was the other. Uh, was was John Cowboys Madden coach. was in that. They brought in. It was John Madden's tour bus. So like, it yeah. was, uh, I'm gonna throw out Bruce Smith because Bruce Smith was in there. I imagine. John Madden was leading the bus. It was Bruce Smith. It might have been like Bo Jackson and like all those guys came in yep. to help out, coach up the little giants and stuff like that. So I need to watch that movie again, really. Yeah. Another one out there that, uh, that we didn't talk about, We Are Marshall. I think that was a pretty touching story, but uh, that was Matthew McConaughey, <laughs> Yeah, right? Matthew McConaughey. It was like I don't, a whole team like perished yeah, in a plane it, crash it was or the something. Year right? af- it was like, well, not the year after, but the, the, the next season when they tried to play football after the team died in, yeah. a, in a plane crash, I believe. Uh, but again, that's been one of the yeah. years since I watched yeah, it. Yeah, same here. So, um, I, I wouldn't be a Bills fan if I didn't mention Second String. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> this, is a, this is a this is a terrible movie, but I think it's also John Voight coaching. I think he's like the only A list actor in there. <laughs> but it's about the Buffalo Bills. Their entire starting roster gets sick from uh, eating like bad oysters, and then. <laughs> And so they so they're in the playoffs, okay. and then you've got this second string that has to step in, and it's a it's not a good movie. But as a Bills fan, <laughs> you do want to watch it because it does have like the starting roster is Doug Flutie. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it is like nice. Doug Flutie's like a, a key player in here. I can't think of anybody else. I think uh, I don't remember if it's Peerless Price or Eric Moulds, but one of those guys is in there. I, I was just picturing when you said uh, sick from Thurman Thomas, sick from eating oysters. I pictured the the, the the sumo player puking on the, the on eggs. the field in the yes. reception or yes. in the uh, replacements yeah. for the eggs. So, 
Well, hey, I think that was a, I think that was a pretty good uh, good list. Yeah. So I guess I'd have to ask, wh- what did we miss? Uh, do you do you agree disagree? I mean, what are the things that we left out? Did we leave out any movies that you're just uh, adamant that we should have had in there? Be sure to leave us uh, some comments on that and let us know. Yeah, so. absolutely. I uh, I'd like to know uh, uh, what your thoughts are on how we were right and wrong on all these because <laughs> I'd like to, I'd like to instigate some more conversations and I will stand by the Friday Night Lights is not as good as varsity blues or the program (laughs) all right there you go there you have it straight from the horse's mouth right here so well hey uh with that i just want to say thanks for joining us on this episode of the pandora theater uh again if you like the video be sure to like the video subscribe ring the bell to get notified every time that we uh push out new content uh and again we're uh available wherever you listen to to podcasts so with that the uh the credits are rolling lights are coming on and that's the end of the show more coffee. Let's get some more coffee. <laughs> <laughs>